it's the most perfect aircraft that I can imagine. No plane has ever been designed to be able to do the same thing. They get so much more than just something that can drop a bomb. That's the beauty of the air platform. It's absolutely incredible. incredible. The Tornado. 40 years after its first flight, the multi-role combat aircraft still forms the backbone of Europe's air defence. 977 tornadoes produced, with well over 3 million flying hours. The tornado success story is the result of one of the largest, most challenging and most successful multinational aircraft programmes ever conceived. August the 14th, 1974, Niels Meister and Lieutenant Commander Paul Millet shortly before the first test flight for the Tornado prototype called P01. We spent two or three days hanging around with Mr. Millet, the English chief pilot, and the weather wasn't that great. It was cloudy and we thought, it's too dangerous. And then we said, okay, let's do it. The expectations were great. Up to the moment we were actually in the air and then everything went smoothly. And when you're sitting inside, the thing rolls and climbs. It's like when you're learning to ride a bike. You sit on it and it goes. An unforgettable experience also for chief pilot Paul Millet. From the time of leaving the ground, the aircraft was one of the nicest I've ever flown. All in all, an absolutely perfect first flight. Forty years ago, nobody could have imagined how this day would be the beginning of a success story that would last well into the 21st century. The turning point was the signing of the Warsaw Pact in 1955, further hardening the front lines between East and West. The tornado was developed in the Cold War for a Cold War scenario. So for low-level, all-weather, high-speed penetration into enemy territory. We had to fight against a very strong uh, enemy with a strong air force and you had to be uh, very good to be able to penetrate such a, such a threat. For that, it's the most perfect aircraft that I can imagine. An aircraft that was designed to combine all the capabilities of the existing air force fleet in one single airframe, a multi-role combat aircraft. It turned into a um, wool-producing, milk-giving, egg-laying sow. A jack-of-all-trades. Development began in 1969, backed by the combined strengths of Germany, Italy and the UK, led by Panavia aircraft. The tri-national team worked hand-in-hand -hand to deliver the precision demands being made of this aircraft. A 
avuto la percezione. For the first time it showed me what real teamwork is all about. Thanks to this new level of standardization, we were able to fly joint missions, sometimes using equipment or requiring maintenance from our allies. From all of this, I had a dream, where everyone works together to create a united Europe. A dream comes true. On July the 29th, 1976, the three NATO members, Germany, Italy and the UK, signed the first production agreement for 40 tornadoes. The team, the experience, the aspiration was exceptional. Since then, the Tornado has been in constant use by the German Luftwaffe, the Italian Aeronautica Militare and the British Royal Air Force. Most people think when you're a fighter pilot and you're flying in combat that it's this incredibly exhilarating feeling. spend your whole life training for it and you just get into mode and you do your business, you're professional, you're safe. Obviously a little bit of adrenaline sharpens your reactions but you don't want too much. We're going in as part of a big coordinated counter air mission to destroy a coastal SAM site. We'll take four tornadoes. The first two aircraft will go in for a ballistic loft attack. The second two aircraft will go in for a retard attack. The tornado conquers the skies at supersonic speed. The big thing that you feel is just an enormous uh, feeling that you've, you've contributed to the effort. And that doesn't necessarily mean I've been off and dropped bombs. Just sometimes, just purely by being there, by, by putting jet noise there is enough to have a very positive effect on saving people's lives on the ground and that in itself is a great feeling. To this day, the Tornado is still NATO's only fighter jet that can both detect and combat enemy radar and anti-aircraft systems with complete autonomy. This is also an indication of how the approach to defense has evolved. You're now not attacking the individual person as the enemy, instead their capacity and their weapons. Within international training exercises, such as Red Flag in the US, the tornado quickly won the respect of the Allied forces. especially with its capability for fully automatic, low-level flying in all weather conditions. Nighttime, low-level flying, you can't see anything. Your eyes are fixed on your little e-scope and you're hoping that you'll get over whatever's looming ahead of you. And at that time, that was the world's first. The idea that an aircraft could attack and engage a target in virtually any weather, nobody else could do that. The tornado's unique capabilities also impressed the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. With the first sale of 72 tornadoes in 1985, the Tornado program wins a strong partner. Just a few years later, the situation in world politics changes. 
from one day to the next. When the Berlin Wall fell, meaning when the Cold War ended, the remaining scenarios were related to individual threats in individual areas. This meant that the system had to be modified to tackle a different type of threat. Not from a great power, but from an occasional enemy posing a limited threat that could surprise with a strike at any moment. August 1990. Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait. The tornado is deployed in combat for the first time. The interesting thing about the first Gulf War was that we initially went with, a, with an idea to fly at low level, but throughout the period of that conflict we moved the aircraft to medium level and then we started to do some of our very first precision attacks with laser guided weapons from Tornado. Precision uh, has gained very much in importance to avoid collateral damage and uh, the integration of the precision weapons on the tornado has proven to be very good. Reconnaissance capabilities have been enhanced because occasional missions and irregular threats have become more imperative than organized defense missions. Eighty percent of our missions end up being reconnaissance and surveillance. We can see everything that's going on on the battlefields, then we can be smart about how we do our business, get our mission done and not have to employ weapons at all, and ultimately that's the goal. Our latest mission into northern Iraq has taken to us to a whole new area which is support to humanitarian aid. In 1998, the last tornado leaves the factory. Successful upgrades and modernization programs planned up to 2025 and beyond ensured that the tornado remains one of the most powerful and versatile aircraft in the world. The tornado story is not over yet. So I hope that industry and the Air Forces will work together to enhance the tornado even more than it already has been in the past. Yes, the airframe is 40 years old, but the actual capability has continued to evolve almost every year of its life. Seeing that makes me want to say, please let me fly one more mission. Forty years of the tornado. A success story like no other. Above all, I'd like to express my gratitude for this tornado system that made us grow professionally, as men, as soldiers, as engineers. It truly strengthened our ability to work united with allied nations.